after years of procrastinating on this. <laughs> finally put together a lesson on James Taylor's Carolina in my mind. been meaning to do this forever and it's just been a kind of daunting task for um, a lot of reasons. One is of course James playing is so free form with his right hand that just getting a grip on it and expressing, uh, you know, showing, uh, getting people to be able to play something like it has, has been a challenge. finally got a lesson together on it. Very long. It's like 10 or 11, 12 parts. I don't even remember now. But uh, we first start with different ways he played it, different chord, uh, the chord progressions that, that evolved over the years. He, he still, he plays it a little differently now than he did 30 years ago, 40 years ago, oh my gosh. And uh, it is, it, but the lesson, I'll, uh, here's, here are some segments from the lesson, but first we talk about the chord progression first, not really worrying about all the intricate little picking. Then we, there's tablature two that shows all of his little runs. <laughs> We talk about his unusual fingerings, reaching, you know, his crossover fingerings and some things like that, playing chords that, in ways that I would normally tell people not to, but they, it makes it very easy for him to get certain sounds. Now, it, I always present ways of, more conventional ways of doing that to get exactly the same sound. So you don't have to learn uh, James's unusual fingerings, but it wouldn't hurt, just in, in general. So here are a few segments from this. The, this lesson's available as part of the Target program at Totally Guitars, where we have hundreds and hundreds of lessons. I'm getting oh, over, well over 500, I think, now. And uh, there are a lot of free lessons to get you started, too. They're a little bit less complicated. This is one of the more detailed lessons and more complicated songs because of everything that's going on in it. But uh, here's a little bit of this, and if you like this and want to check out more of the stuff that we have, come visit us at Totally Guitars. take a look at a song I have loved for most of my life. Uh, this is of course James Taylor, Carolina in My Mind. Now it originally came out in 1968 on his first album, the Apple album. Uh, he's, he's one of the early stars, wannabe stars, on the Beatles label as they were trying to get that rolling in 1968. Didn't really do very much uh, at the time, but then he, of course he had hit it big a year or two later, 1970, with Sweet Baby James and uh, Fire and Rain and Country Road and Blossom and Anywhere Like Heaven and all that stuff on that album and of course following up with You've Got a Friend and stuff from Mudslide Slim. And, uh, and a few years later he re-recorded this and um, Something in the Way She Moves for a Greatest Hits album that came out in the mid-70s. And that's the version that most of us are familiar with because the first version was very fast, orchestrated, uh, kind of kind of frantic a bit. Now if you watch versions of him playing it recently, it's very slow and just much more, uh, I don't know, really really draws you in, much more than kind of pounding, pounding it at you. So now he also plays this lots and lots of different ways and different uh, even different chord progressions at times. There are times when he, in the, in the early versions, for example, he had the G to F sharp in the bass going down to E minor, and in later versions, then to A7. Later versions, he went right from G to E minor to A7. So we're going to talk about some of those different uh, variations, and <clears throat> this is not going to be then note for note the way any of them went. The idea with playing a song like Carolina in my mind is um, having down the chord progression, or at least a skeleton version of the chord progression, understanding a lot of James' right hand techniques, and some of his really specific little licks and fills, many of which are um, easier to play with some of the bizarre, unusual fingerings he uses for playing some of the chords. Uh, he plays his D chords and his A chords with what I would call crossover fingering, meaning his first finger is up on a higher string than a, a further finger at the same fret on a lower string. Make that really simple. Standard D chord would be your first, second, and third fingers, first finger on the third string. If you switch your first and second fingers, putting your first finger on the first string and your second finger on the third string, you'd have an idea of what I'm talking about with crossover fingerings. And he even does things like using his second finger, playing a D chord with C sharp in the bass, reaching over to get the C sharp, reaching over his third finger, 
to get the C sharp in the bass with his second finger. I usually have students learn how to do that with their fourth finger. Anyway, so um, James uses a lot of very unorthodox fingerings that make it look very easy when he's, when he's playing things. It's not. So to get it to sound exactly the way he does is either a lot of work or you have to adopt his, his unusual fingerings. We're going to talk about all, at least most of that as this lesson evolves. So the first thing we want to get to is, is the chord progression and how to, how to finger a lot of these chords to have as minimal movement as possible. And then we'll go get into the right hand stuff, but really the, the plan for this lesson is going to be get the chord progression down first, because if you look at later versions of him playing this, he sometimes even just strums it very lightly. in his little signature licks to, to make it work. So that's what I'm going to try to break down in this lesson. We'll see. Hopefully with some success. So coming up, a uh, hopefully very detailed look at what's going on with Carolina in my mind. Ah, one last thing. I'm going to be doing this uncapoed because it's just easier for you to follow frets and things like that. Um, in early days, the original was done capoed at the third fret. Later on, on the, uh, the, the Greatest Hits one, it was at the second. I may have had those crossed up. But there's also a very old video of him playing it uh, uncapoed. So really the idea with the capo is you can put it anywhere you want. So the capo is not like hard and fast. It needs to be in a certain spot. If you had it the third... It would just sound in, in a little higher key. So uh, that, that really would be determined by where you want to sing it. So lesson going to be done without a capo, but uh, to play along with him in the various recordings, you're going to have to put your capo at the second or third fret. I have never found any of him playing at the first, but have seen some of him playing it uncapoed as well. Okay, enough of that little diversion. Coming up soon, the lesson on Carolina in my mind. James Taylor's right hand technique is um, very, very free form. So I'm going to try to give you a little bit of uh, just a rundown of it, but we're also going to talk about just, uh, it's, it's a combination of picking and strumming. Now he typically uses three fingers on the top three strings. First finger on the third string, uh, index finger on the third, middle finger on the second, and ring finger on the first. Sometimes he'll move these three fingers, sometimes he'll move to just two on the top strings, if he might be doing that on a D chord. Sometimes he'll move them to the middle strings depending on what else is going on, and, and maybe grab the four middle strings with his thumb. So thumb is usually going to play the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings and sometimes he'll do a, a slightly modified arpeggio pattern I'm playing a D chord now just something like that thumb index second and third fingers together on the top two strings and then and then back with the index there um, will but he also does a lot of strumming brushing in the middle of his patterns all of those brushes with his index finger using the nail for the down for downs and even even the nail sound kind of for, for ups uh, when I when I use my right hand for strumming especially in, in hybrid or in combination with picking I like to use different fingers for the downs and the ups so I encourage my students to get used to using the middle two fingers for the downs kind of putting them together like that and brushing down across the strings and the index finger for the ups now James Taylor, Paul McCartney, a lot of them do use this one finger brushing technique for downs and ups. Now if I was playing a G chord for example, I might do something like that, that same thumb, index, and then top two strings, and then there might be a little brush in there. Well, the way James Taylor plays many of his standard chords is, as I mentioned before, a bit unorthodox. He plays his D chord with what I'd refer to as crossover fingering. Instead of your first and second fingers like this, they are reversed. Third finger still on the D. And what this does is it makes it that every time he does the hammer on, on a D chord or an A chord, it's done with his index finger 
Sometimes I'll even do this chord with a double hammer on. First and second fingers hammering on. Um, he uses a very similar shape when he plays his A's with what... I would of course always have people play A, first finger in the middle. Um, many times you'll see it done this way, three in a row. First finger, second, third, and third all done that way. He does it completely upside down from that with his second finger in the middle, third finger on the fourth string, and first finger on the second string. And we can really squeeze his uh, skinny fingers into that little area. Okay, I don't recommend this at all. But there's, a, there's something important about when he plays the D this way. When he goes to B in the bass, that keeps this finger on the A. When we have the D chord with B in the bass, as opposed to if you play D like this and you just go get B here, you get a different note. You get an open G in there. So uh, the way I would adapt that is that you need to make sure that if you're not doing it James way and just moving his first finger to the there, your first finger has to go to the B and your second finger has to cover the note your first finger just left. Well, let's talk about some of the details now. Um, I'll, here we'll talk. We'll start with the intro. And sometimes what James is doing on a chord is really important. Sometimes it's not. So I'll try to point out what I have in the tab. I've kind of pared this down to just examples or samples of what he does at different things. In the introduction, he starts with this D chord, and we do want to hear this hammer on with the the, eight, the sixteenth note pickup. Notice we've got another couple of sixteenths on the way to our G chord. Now that whole time I kept my third finger on the D right there, and that this is a really good part to get down exactly right. Um, again, as, as we go on, I'll point out parts that doesn't really matter if it, what happens there because you're, there's singing going on over it here. But, but getting this down pretty much note for note is nice because that hammer-on's a great beginning. A couple of open notes on the way to the G chord and these pinches. Are, are kind of a nice little Very little movement. We went to the G, we just had to play the F sharp in the bass. For the E minor 7, all we needed to do was really put our first finger here, and for the A7, sus4, all we had to do was change, was change strings. So very little going on with the uh, left hand there. Making sure you're looking at the notation for 16th notes because every time they have a 16th note it would be a very quick like uh, in the on the the and of beat two in the second measure on the E minor seven one and two and a three and four and a's left 